Hello everyone and welcome to another commentary of Chaotic Fringe. About a week ago, maybe a little under a week ago, Mitt Romney made a comment that some felt was uh, insensitive. It was, to kind of set everything up, it all started with um, Joe Biden making a comment about the um, make a comment about what the Mitt Romney administration is probably going to be to a lot of people and he used the statement that there would be chains. I, I, I'm sorry I don't have the exact the exact wording correct but he equated chains with slavery cha uh, chaining, y'all gonna get chains, something like that and that brought a response from the Mitt Romney campaign where they were saying that that was completely out of line and was kind of akin to stirring up racial tension. And the statement that caused a new cycle to go with this whole thing, uh, Mitt Romney was talking to a group and he said the following um, to, this, to this group of people. So here's the audio of what he said. His campaign and his surrogates have made wild and reckless accusations that disgrace the office of the presidency. This is what an angry and desperate presidency looks like. Mr. President, take your campaign of division and anger and hate back to Chicago. Okay, so he said this audio, and when he talked about anger, there were some that interpreted that anger that he mentioned as um, code word. And you heard a lot about code words uh, this campaign where lots of things that are being said are something's being said but it's actually more racially motivated because they're using code words as opposed to saying the actual word. And a commentator from MSNBC is on the show The Cycle. His name is Torre. He talked about this well, they were having, actually, to be fair, they were having a general discussion, roundtable discussion, and they played the Romney comment, and Torre had a comment about it and said an unfortunate word. We'll just leave it at that. He said something unfortunate about this, which actually made what he said more of an issue, meaning the word, was more of an issue than what he was actually trying to say. And you knew this was going to happen. Once he said it, you knew that was going to be the focus. It wasn't going to be what he was trying to convey. It was going to be, he said, this N-word thing that caused a problem. And sure enough, uh, a few hours later, um, on a station out of Los Angeles, and I use the station out of Los Angeles, A, because I just happen to be listening to it, but this station is a very large and powerful station in Los Angeles as far as talk radio. Um, so KFI had Brian Suits on. Now, Brian Suits normally does, um, does a show at a, at a different time slot. A lot of their regular people were on vacation, so a lot of the other people were doing different time slots to make up for it. So he was in a different time slot. Not an excuse or anything about that, it's just that he was in a different time slot. And he had issue with what Torre said. And in my view, and I'll explain my view, I believe that in his way of trying to explain how Torre was wrong, not only with what the word that he used, but the premise that he was setting up, in doing that, he actually proved Torre's point. So, there was a lot to go through on, on this particular thing because this was a um, about a 20 minute segment but it was broken up over um, two time periods. Like one was one hour and then the next part of it was during another hour of the show and there was stuff in between. So it was, and there was a lot that could have been broken down and what I tried to do was get everything down to the essence of what he was trying to say to show where as much as he wanted to say X and to discredit Torre 
he actually proved Torrey's point. So the first thing I'm going to bring up, the first part actually that I'm going to bring up is actually the f was in the first segment of this talk, and it has to do where he's explaining um, which is a legit, and I give him credit for this, and that's why I wanted to use this. He gives a legitimate point in saying that a lot of times both sides, whether minority groups or white people, that's his term, white people, um, they're not seeing eye to eye on it. But, and I'll just let you listen in on what he said, and so this is what he said. Truth number one, many times white people do not see racism when they should, where it's really obvious, and white people are in denial that there's racism. Here's the other side of that coin. Many people, minorities, many, many times minorities attribute to racism things that are otherwise innocent or were not maliciously intended to be racism. In other words, sometimes it's just fried chicken. See, <laughs> that's what I'm talking you were following him and he was making perfect sense until that last part. He could have said, and a cigar is just a cigar. And he could have said maybe fried rice is just fried rice. He could have said a burrito is just a burrito. He didn't do any of those. To give him credit, he didn't say, and a watermelon is just a watermelon. So I'll give him credit for that. But he's already doing what Torrey was, has, was talking about in his initial discussion on the show. He's saying, he could have, he used fried chicken. He used fried chicken, which he knows, and let's say, you know, he, the man is about my age, so he's lived. He's lived through this stuff, so he knows fried chicken is associated with black people. So when he says that, it's like I said, it's not like he said it's a burrito. It's not like he said it was fried rice. He didn't use any other thing that could have worked with it. He said sometimes fried chicken is just fried chicken. And anyone out there, images are going to pop into their head. It just is. That's what, that's what happens. And you can say, I know there's people out there saying, oh, but you're just being too insensitive. You, you're not, you're not talking the truth. Advertisers spend millions of dollars, billions of dollars, to get certain things to pop into your head so that you will buy a product or think of a product. This is not anything, this is not anything new and it's not anything that, is, that we're talking about that some alchemic, alchemic arts that are done in a back room with a bearded Alan Moore and a sock puppet. We're not talking about that. When you have 80s music, music played on a commercial and you hear that 80s song and you think of that commercial, they've done their job. They've, associated, they've taken um, some music that you know and they've, taken a, and they've taken that childhood image that you know of when you were a kid, when you were younger, and they're associated with a car, or they're associated with detergent, or they're associated with something else. So now when you hear that song, you think of that. Why would the same thing not be done with these other things and not be at, with this other stuff when we're talking about trying to get racial passions turned? Why wouldn't it be used with that? Why would not that not be a legitimate argument? That's what Torrey is talking about, which... Brian Suits kind of doesn't want to believe. Like I said, his in this in this particular case, his comment is true, but he ends it with something that says, "Ah, I just threw that out there. I didn't know what it meant." He knew what it meant, and he specifically did it that way to get that reaction. So he knew what he was doing. So now, now we go to the crux of the next one. This is a little bit of a longer clip, but it has to be this long clip because. It pulls everything together. And so now I'm going to play this longer clip, and it's going to get into the meat of what we're talking about all together with this. 
And I mean, okay, so let me let me jump in because uh, you know he might be right about that. The Willie Horton ad, uh, the many attribute to getting uh, Michael Dukakis defeated by George Bush in '88, and and all that, but that might be true. But I got news for Toure and anyone else that agrees with him that when a white man says anger or hate, it's racist. The president's black. There's a black dude in the White House. Has been since uh, since early January of uh, of '08. Pardon me, of '09. Been there for a while. His wife turns out to be black as well. There's There's been a black president now coming up on the election of a black president, coming up on four years real soon here. Uh, so there there are no more racially charged words because whatever stereotype someone might have, the guy breaks it because uh, we we have – there's word that behind closed doors he is a very angry guy. Uh, And there's word that the guy has a personal loathing of Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, which is returned in kind by Benjamin Netanyahu. And that when Netanyahu visited the White House, Obama raised his voice, got very that he. But the guy has self-control. The guy has a a remarkable self-control, does he not? Obama has whatever you say about him. The guy does have self-control. That's that's what you learn. When when a succession of fathers walk out of you on your life, you learn how to be the popular guy in the class. He and you do that with self control. There's no doubt he's intelligent. He's got self control. He's he is not any one stereotype of what that guy just said. So I beg to differ. Okay, there was a lot in that, and that's why I wanted to leave that clip in the way it was. And that was the actual clip. That was not edited, and I wanted that in there because he went from the spectrum of and let me actually before I go into that let me just do the setup real quick because there's this could take actually uh, when I was editing through this this could take an awful long time to go through and that's why I said I wanted to get kind of the essence of what Brian Suits was trying to say in response to what Torre was saying what Torre was saying was that the president or I'm sorry Mitt Romney and the GOP in general is trying to paint Obama as the angry black man. That's what he's trying. That's what they're trying to do is make him the angry black man. And Brian Suits does not agree with that. He says no. And even in Torrey's explanation of saying this angry black man, he's saying the problem is with. He doesn't say the problem is, but he says that the president is definitely not the stereotypical angry black man. He's not it. But by constantly portraying him as the angry black man, the angry black man moniker goes on the president. That's why Torre was upset when uh, Mitt Romney called this an angry candidacy because he said it's playing into the stereotype of the angry black man. Brian Suits doesn't see that. Yet, his comment that he just made proved Torrey's point. Why? Because he starts off by saying, well, the president isn't really that way. We've had the president in the office for four years. He doesn't, he's not the angry black man. His wife is black. She's not the, basically he said, we know this guy. He's not this person. Yet, Before he can even take a breath to go on to another thought, he says, well, you know, behind closed doors, he's angry. He hates Netanyahu. He's angry. He has self-control. He's able to control it with the public. So, you know, and then he brings in about father, then he brings in the thing about the fathers and wanting to be liked. And so it's like, so you're saying that we know this president this black president, he's not an angry black man because he showed, we've seen him, he's not an angry black man. But behind closed doors, he's an angry black man. Word is out there that he's an angry black man. And you know he's an angry black man because, well, he's able to control it. And with the amount of, you know, two fathers abandoning him, he had to learn how to control his anger. He's got the president sounding like the Hulk, that the, that he has to like control himself or not. He's going to turn into the green angry beast. Now, the thing that the GOP is doing, and you and this is something that Brian Suits 
didn't get that Torre was also talking about is that this is not a one-time thing and Brian Suits actually in his discussion talks about an incident with NBC um, NBC after the Gabby Douglas win at the Olympics had a commercial that came up with a Pachucan monkey that was on the rings that was promoting a show called Animal Hospital for NBC and there were few people who thought that this was a racist thing and he again agreeing with him rightly states that this is kind of stupid that this, you would think of this as a racist thing and here's the thing that I would say to suits and other people like him when you take things as a simple incident yes you can it can be tough to say well does this really mean this does this really mean that as far as racism it is the accumulation of over and over and over again putting little things here and little things there that it causes this issue to come to the forefront to where you have to say okay one time may not be it but when you've done it 50 times you've got to say there is something there they are playing to something that again we're talking the code words you're playing to the code words in another part of the of the radio show he talked to Brian Suits talked about I didn't know that food stamps associated with the president meant a racist thing because he was talking of course about the Newt Gingrich thing of calling him the food stamp president and he went on to say well you know that most people that are on food stamps are white and all that he gave that stuff again I know that Brian Suits is about my age has to be about my age he grew up in the time of Reagan okay Reagan talked about the welfare queens when you mention the word welfare queens you are not thinking of a white woman sitting at home picking up welfare checks that's fat and overweight with braids in her hair that has one guy that's in jail that gave her one kid and another guy that's hustling off the street that gave her the two other kids and she's sitting at home waiting for a welfare check that is not the image that you get when you hear welfare queen because at that time in this country and we're not talking that long ago as much as we'd like to think that the 80s and the 90s were such a long time ago they weren't that long ago when you said welfare queen you were talking a black woman with three to four kids in a tenement apartment sitting there waiting for a welfare check while she's watching on her big screen TV at home that was the image that was out there of the welfare queen so when Newt Gingrich talks about welfare, welfare president, that's the image people are getting. They're not getting the white person that is on welfare. They're not getting that image. They're getting the minority that is on welfare. And I think what happens is people like Brian Suits, and I, and I don't mean to really harp all the time on Brian Suits. He's just the one making the comments. But when... The, t the audience that people like the GOP are trying to focus on when they're bringing up these things over and over and over again may not be him. It may be that that what they call the low the uh, low education voter, low volume voter. They're going after that person that's hearing bits and pieces all the time, and it's not sitting there trying to analyze stuff not trying to figure out is this right or is this wrong or whether statistics they hear this thing and they hear it over and over and over and over again and I like to say something else to to kind of encompass the whole Brian Suits thing which he did not mention in his little talk that he had for all this time when you're talking about you're saying that we know this president for four years that we've known him for four years and so we know he's not this angry person we know he's not this person that we're talking about that you mentioned if that's the case why is it for three of those years was there this huge thing about his birth certificate 
we've known him, we've had the president for three years. Then he brings out his birth certificate because it was demanded of his birth certificate by all these folks who said that he wasn't born in the U.S. Why was that? What he brought that up, and you and you're not concerned about that. You're not saying. You're not saying, wow, that seems a bit of an odd thing. We know this person. Of course he was born in the U.S. And I found something else, Brian Suits, that I, that I am directing at you. Your page on the KFI website is rather interesting. Because if you know the president, if you've known this president, we've known this president, you know, you're saying tall him angry is like really weird and not really good. Why is it that on your site, your KFI site, you have your bio on there, shows you're born in Hawaii, and even you say, long form, on request, being humorous, but obviously you're talking about the president. Which again, triggers up stuff, is going to trigger things up in people's minds, that the president may not be legitimate. Now, as much as you say that where again you say we've known this president we've been there for four, we've had him almost for four years he has said that he's not a Muslim yet Hank Williams Jr. again today made us has a statement out there saying that he believes the president is Muslim Dave Mustaine just had something put out where he said that the whole shooting thing was a plan by the Obama administration to do um, to cause uh, gun, gun control. You ha and, and of course, let's not even mention Ted Nugent and his comments. These are things that are said by people of the GOP party that you're saying, that you're trying to encompass and say, well, we know this president and he's not that way, but these comments keep coming out. This stuff keeps coming out saying he's not, he's not that, he's not that, he's not that. You may think of him as this, as this calm black man, even you did, even you did. Well, the president's this calm black man, but he, behind the scenes, he's angry. And just to end this, I want to end this on a little bit of a personal thing, because, again, I'm sure Brian Suits is a good person, and I'm sure all these people in the GOP are just trying to, you know, defeat the president. That's all they really care about. And they can't understand this racial stuff that people are implying and the stuff that they're giving. It's there. Stop pretending that what you're doing is not racially tinged. I'm not going to say, not racially motivated, racially tinged. You yourself, in two clips that I used, and there are more that could be used, but in the two clips that I did from this show that you had, you threw in fried chicken, and then you said the president was not angry, Yet, before you could take a breath, you showed how not only he was angry, but gave this psychological reason for him being angry. Thus, proving what Torre was really talking about. I admit, his use of the N-word, the way that he used it, distracted and was bad. But his premise that he was talking about, you know is right. Because you did it. You did exactly what he said was happening. So just, just know, just say, just admit that what is going on is that there, this campaign that's being run by the GOP is trying to defeat the president by making the president the black guy not just the black president or the black guy but the angry black guy that's what they're going for they're going for getting that segment of the population that might be uneasy with him to vote against him and that's what's going on you don't have to get yourself all in a kerfuffle you don't have to get yourself all upset and say oh this isn't true oh i thought we we're in a post-racial thing we elected a black president so why is it there it's there you do it yourself. You did it yourself in the whole thing that you did. Like I said, there's a ton of stuff that's there. And as far as the war on women, I'm going to talk about that later because 
there was another thing that happened with this this um, thing that was done uh, that was talked about on what, that talked about one of the other commentators that that was there that was just fascinating to me. But I'll do that at another time. So Brian suits. I know I, I talked about you a lot on this thing, and it was it was because you illustrated, maybe without knowing it, but you illustrated exactly what Torrey was talking about, what the GOP is doing. They are trying to take, yes, they're trying to take the President of the United States and reduce him to the angry black man, that he's that black man that you're scared about. He's the boogeyman. And you, by saying that wasn't the case and you couldn't understand why, illustrated it completely so that's my concern is that it's at a point where even when you're trying to say that you're trying to defend something or work out something people are still falling into that trap they fall into that trap all the time of no I'm not a racist but you're saying stuff that you wouldn't necessarily say with anyone else because it's racist so that's what I'm seeing and maybe you're saying I'm seeing this because I'm a black guy. But why should me being black diminish what it is that I'm seeing and I feel calmly telling to you? So that's my commentary from Chaotic Fringe in a calm manner. And I will talk to you again soon.